Hello everyone, welcome to Auto On Demand, where I post videos every week about pop culture, politics, and everything in between. So I don't know about y'all, but when I was in middle school, I was like convinced that something was gonna happen to me, like when I got to high school. I was watching the Vampire Diaries at the time, and like Miss Elena Gilbert was giving us very much grown women, very much full hips, no acne, two hot immortal men like fighting over her all the time. And she was like a junior in high school. Middle school me, on the other hand, was giving very much what the cat dragged in very much prepubescent no Damon Salvatore's in sight so I mean the only logical conclusion was that somewhere in high school I was going to turn into the black Alina Gilbert and I, I was very ready to receive that but the gag was Nina Debrev was literally 20 years old at the time <laughs> and like would have been age-wise like a college sophomore same with the entire cast of Gossip Girl Glee and every teen show with a full cast of adults. So imagine my surprise when I got to high school, I was looking around like, it's not, <laughs> it's not giving what y'all said it's supposed to give, like, no, no I, I wasted, wasted my, my money. money. So today we're just gonna dive into why every teen on TV is like 27 years old. We're gonna go into some examples, how teens on TV have changed over time, then talk about why this gets a little problematic when it comes to body image um, and the overall misrepresentation and hypersexualization of the teenage experience as a whole. And we'll finish it off with what, if anything, can be done about it. So go ahead and sit back, relax, don't forget to subscribe, and let's get into it. So apart from a couple exceptions, like the cast of the original Saved by the Bell and the cast of the popular UK teen drama Skins. A lot of iconic on-screen teens have been played by far older adults and this has been going on for a while now. Ingrid Bergman was 33 when she played Joan of Arc in a 1948 film about the brave teenager. The supposedly 16 year old main character in the 1976 horror movie Carrie was played by 26 year old Sissy Spacek. The entire cast of Grease probably should have been gearing up to go to their 10 year high school reunions, but instead we're playing teenagers in the 1978 dramedy at ages 24, 29, and 34. Zooming out from individual characters though, when you look at the cast as a whole, Glee, Riverdale, and Buffy are by far the most shocking examples of adults playing teenagers with the cast as a whole being on average eight years older than the characters they were playing. Like it got to the point in Glee where some of the actors were showing signs of aging that couldn't believably be showing up in a high schooler and Ryan Murphy the creator of the show had to graduate the characters in the third season because and this is a quote from him there's nothing more depressing than a high schooler with a bald spot but the obvious next question is like why do casting directors do this like why do they continue casting adults in seemingly like every single teen drama so based on the sources I read one of the biggest and I mean kind of like most obvious reasons is labor laws <laughs> like it's not that exciting it's literally just like a legal issue basically the number of hours that anyone under 18 can work are very restricted and controlled by the labor laws that we have here in the u.s and in some countries abroad you cannot have 14 year old timmy working like hours and hours on end like the law says that there needs to be plenty of opportunity for Timmy to go outside, get his education, eat some food, touch some grass, etc. But actors over 18 can spend longer, more efficient days on set. So producers and casting directors get like more bang for their buck. Another reason is that, you know, like teen shows and movies nowadays include a lot of sexual situations for drama or intrigue. Older actors can act out those like sexual situations in a way that younger actors couldn't without raising very, very serious and legitimate ethical and legal concerns. Also using older actors kind of makes those like wild sexual scenarios a little bit more believable. Like it would be a hard sell to say that like regular 16 year old girls have the adventurous adult sex life of the girls in Pretty Little Liars, for example, but you know, sub in 20 to 23 year old women like Ashley Benson and Shay Mitchell and all of a sudden it's not that unbelievable. Another reason though is that Hollywood has a very kind of rigid and standard set of acceptable physical characteristics that is already very hard to attain and maintain for adults who have more or less stopped growing. <laughs> but we all know that adolescence and puberty in general is very like fluid and awkward like just imagine you're a casting director and you cast like the loveliest most talented 14 year old boy so for the entire season you get like this perfect 
childish high voice and image and everything's great and you all take a break and come back for season two and your lead actor walks into the studio with a deep voice and Adam's apple he's like shot up four inches he gets a voice crack every other sentence and all of a sudden he doesn't he no longer fits what your boss is envisioned for the role or like what happened with Hermione Granger like you're supposed to cast this like bushy haired like kind of awkward looking girl and a couple years down the line you end up with Emma Watson who's gorgeous and no longer really fits the you know like the characterization that the author had originally given to Hermione Granger. Basically adults aren't subject to puberty so for continuity's sake it's a safer bet to cast like fully grown actors and actresses because you can more or less predict what they're going to look like three or four years down the line. So now that I've covered why this practice works for the people casting and producing these shows let's talk about the often negative impact that casting adults as teenagers has on the teenagers themselves. The most obvious issue for for teens watching adults pretend to be teens is that it facilitates a completely unrealistic standard for how teenagers look. Like which high school has these like completely square jawed boys, smooth skin all around, completely developed like boobs and hips. Like it's just very unrepresentative of what the average high schooler looks like. But honestly, I would be like not okay with that. But I mean, I feel like someone could argue that all on-screen fiction demands like some suspension of disbelief like why am I willing to accept these teenagers like running around Mystic Falls like, killing vampires and saving the world but I'm drawing the line at how they look you know? I think the more insidious issue is not actually what these actors look like but more that the situations and scenarios they act in are very very adult in content. And I'm not saying that teens can't be or aren't like sexual beings. I. I feel like we all know that's not true. The portrayal of teenagers in these like kind of advanced sexual relationships changes what teens and adults, which is very important, I'm gonna get into that next, what teens and adults think that teenagers are capable of. The adults playing these teenagers can consent. The teenagers they are playing cannot. <laughs> and that leads to very serious moral issues that I'm gonna get into next. That leads me to, in my opinion, one of the most disturbing tropes that these teen dramas love normalizing and coming back to again and again and again, the teacher-student relationship. We've seen it in Mean Girls. Coach Carr? Gossip Girl, Riverdale, Pretty Little Liars, and so many more. Let's zoom in on Riverdale. In the first season, we see a semi-romantic but definitely sexual relationship between one of the main characters, Archie, and his music teacher, Miss Grundy. Now, at the time, Archie was being played by 20-year-old KJ Appa, but in the show, he was supposed to be like 15. Watch this clip for a second. Are you and Miss Grundy, like, together? You and your music teacher are having an affair? We are together look it sounds scandalous well what is grundy to you anyway your girlfriend your <sighs> booty tutor girl <laughs> that's not he he ha ha hoo hoo like you're free to go that's law and order svu at your door that's jail time that's your name on a registry that's an abusive relationship <laughs> like what is going on here and just like in the other shows this instance of an older character in a position of power basically manipulating and someone under the age of consent goes completely unaddressed and basically unpunished. As I said before, the actors and actresses playing these roles can legally consent to the sexual situation they find themselves in, but the characters they're playing, like the characters themselves, the teenagers themselves, legally cannot. And shows that portray these relationships as like scandalous, like steamy little sources of drama and not the illegal and harmful situations that they are, run the risk of desensitizing viewers and making young people more susceptible to these situations in real life. All right, y'all, let me round out this video by talking about some things that we could do or are currently being done to fix this issue. Because like, I, I think it's a tricky situation to navigate without disadvantaging like someone in the process. For example, like an obvious solution would be, all right, like let's start casting younger, more age appropriate actors for these roles, right? But show business is like a really cutthroat industry that essentially treats child actors like disposable commodities and forces them to give up a substantial chunk of their childhood to grow their careers. And we've seen how like rising to fame at a young age can really, really negatively impact a young adult's mental health. So yeah, I don't know about y'all, but I definitely will not be like a vocal advocate for more child actors in the industry. Another potential solution is to kind of shift the setting out of high school and more towards college or post-college so that actors age 20 and up can start playing 
characters that not only look like them, but also face a similar set of problems. But that might lead to less representation of the high school experience in media. And also, I mean, like these writers are like kind of lazy. I feel like it's easier to build drama around like who so-and-so is gonna take to prom than like where the character is gonna get their like sophomore summer internship. <laughs> and like what they're gonna do next for their career like you know personally i think the best solution is for casting directors to kind of keep the ages as close as possible like maybe like 20 21 to minimize the risk of misrepresentation um but also i think that maybe like writers and producers need to start like really critically thinking about how they tell these teenage stories like why are we telling so many teen stories and teen settings with adult teen actors that don't really reflect the realities of the teenage experience. Like I feel like it's time to add more nuance to how we portray the teenage experience. And we should also probably stop normalizing like dangerous tropes that would not be in any way like funny or cute or like scandalous if actual teens were in those situations. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. Like, do you think this is an issue that needs fixing? Um, if so, like, what do you think could be the best path forward? Let me know down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.